and welcome to another episode of Ubar. In today's episode, we are going to start talking about serverless monitoring. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started. <laughs> So I'm sorry I'm like this, but I was quite sick last week and I could not set up my recording studio, but well, this is just the intro, then we are going to get over my face. This is the first video in the monitoring series and I will talk a little bit about monitoring in general in this video, about monitoring serverless applications and in the following videos we are going to analyze different tools to monitor serverless applications. So let's get started with the video. So let's get started this video with the first question. Is monitoring the same as observability? And then observability is a word with a lot of hype, so it's good to take a look what this both works means. Let's define observability first. First, it's important to notice that a system is observable. That's an adjective. It's a property of the system. A system is observable when we can infer the internal states of a system by the knowledge of its external output. Monitoring, on the other hand, is a verb. We are monitoring a system. We monitor a system to see how it's doing, to know their, its states. So basically, monitoring and observability are two things that are not the same. They are different. An observable system will be easier to monitor because it will externalize better the internals so we can see how the system is doing at any time with no problems. But there are other things that you need to do in order to have an observable system, not only monitoring it. So the next question is what we should monitor? In a distributed system, there are four things that we need to monitor. According to the SRA book from Google, I'll leave the link in the description box, that is latency, traffic, errors, and saturation. Latency is the time that it takes to service a request. It's important to know the latency between a successful request and a failure request. Traffic is the measure on how much demand is being placed on your system. For example, in a web service, this measure is usually HTTP request per second. Usually this metric depends on the nature of the service and in some cases it will be other things, not only requests per second. Errors is the rate that the request fails. And then we have saturation and we will know how full our service is. We will know the resources that are more uh, restricted in our, in our service. Like for example, if we are accessing too much to a database or if some of our queues are piling up with things that we cannot handle and things like that. For me, these are very basic metrics for a system. And in my opinion, we need more than that to know how our system is doing. In a serverless application, I think we should measure business KPIs to know if the service is okay. This is something I learned from my personal experience. What I mean with business metrics is to have some metrics that we care. For example, how many accounts are created every day? If we have a service like Netflix, how many views you have in your videos or how many visitors you're having in a day or in an hour? These metrics will help you to know if your system is performing well. One thing I learned with serverless applications is that silence is a com common problem. Sometimes part of your architecture fails and as the whole application is event driven and asynchronous, you don't get errors. So errors for me are an important metric, but sometimes silence is also errors. So let's talk a little bit about what are the challenges in monitoring a serverless application. There are a lot of challenges associated to monitor serverless applications. Serverless applications are by nature distributed and you don't own the code of the whole application. You might not even have all your application hosted in the same provider. Half of it can be in AWS and the other one can be in Azure and it can be using the authentication from mode zero, for example. So these are some challenges associated to monitoring your serverless applications. First, we don't have access to the underlying infrastructure. We cannot see how loaded is a database when we are using a database service. We don't know how loaded is the CPU in our lambdas. We need to track other things. We want to know to know how saturated the database is in the serverless world. And sometimes things can fail in the infrastructure side and we might not even know because we don't have any, any access to it. We have mostly asynchronous transactions, meaning that following one transaction from start to end is very challenging and we might lost track in the middle. 
So we need to have instruments in place that allow us to follow those transactions. Also, we have unpredictable costs. As one of the main promises of serverless is you pay as you go, you never know how much you're going to pay. So how you can estimate that? And then we have the last one that is the compute limitations. We know we have some limitations on how long our code can run, for example, or how long our requests can be open for, for example, API gateway timeouts, or then timeouts with our external third parties connections and things like that. So we have co some limitations that are put on our system. One important thing that I learned is not to track the resources individually as one resource by itself might not say anything interesting, but track them as a whole and end to end. That's why I mentioned before that tracking business metrics is a good way to track resources in an end to end call, a whole transaction. This will give you the information of the system health. One thing everybody talks a lot is debugging serverless applications and how challenging that is. And that's challenging because our systems are distributed and asynchronous, and then we can get lost in the debugging process. When we find an error in our application, we need to trace it back and we need to check where and why these errors were produced in our application. So we need to have some kind of tracing in place. For serverless applications, one common thing to do is to have distributed tracing, a way to trace a transaction end-to-end -end through all the different resources, no matter if the call is asynchronous or asynchronous. We are going to see this in practice when we check some of the third-party monitoring tools that they do it pretty cool. So what are the characteristics of a good monitoring tool, in my opinion? In general, we need a good service that will compile all the logs, metrics, and traces that the application produce. All the different resources of our system should produce these things, and they can be monitored in one tool. One thing that I learned that a good monitoring system should have everything in one place. Jumping from one service to another to know the state of the service is complex, and it's hard to do to in an everyday work basis. Another thing that I saw in some monitoring tools is that they bring some overhead to our application. As the function compute is ephemeral, sometimes the monitoring systems need to run some code in our functions to send information to their systems. That, in my opinion, is not very optimal, but usually this service can be more flexible than the others that don't add this overhead. When we analyze the monitoring systems, we will see some examples of this. Another important thing, in my opinion, is that we can set up the monitoring of our system as infrastructure as code. We can do it from the code and from the different scripting we have. We don't need to go to any console and do click, 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 click in order to set up the monitoring system. We can automate the creation of the monitoring new environment and we can test our monitoring systems before we go live with our application. So this is something very important to make sure that when our application is working in live, we know that everything is set up properly. Another quality the systems needs to have is to have um, quality metrics. So good metrics are in general sufficiently granular, meaning that you can uh, have um, things like for one second or one minute or one day, depending on what your application and what is your metric need that you can do some kind of tagging and filtering, so your metrics. So then you can search and query for these things in your service and you can go back and do different correlations and understand how your system behaves. And this will improve your general observability in your system. Also that they're long live. We want to return these metrics as long as we can so we can see patterns and understand our system and do explorative um, analysis for improving the observability in our system. So this for me is what we are looking for in a, a monitoring system. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up and also let me know in the comments what kind of tools you will be interested in knowing more about, which ones you would like me to review, which ones you would like to know more. And remember that at the end of this series, when I finish with some tools, I will do a blog post doing a comparison and my personal opinion on each of the tools. I will not put much opinion in these videos, but I will share it in that blog post. Around here, as always, <laughs> if I move too much these champs, uh, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. If you go, go and check them out. If not, then I see you in the next episode of Ubar. Ciao, ciao!